Hey, it's Mike here, and today, if you're a vegan, you've been asked it, maybe you're not a vegan, you've been sent here because you asked it, it's where do you get your protein on a vegan diet? Usually, it's a well-meaning, curious question, but a lot of times, it comes with the implication of you cannot get enough protein on a vegan diet, so we're gonna go through a bunch of science on this. But in a sense, how can somebody not ask this question when their entire life they've been told that they absolutely have to eat animal protein to grow or even just maintain muscle? We're gonna answer this literally with some plant protein numbers in a bit. We're gonna use logic as well, but really the reason I wanted to do this video is because science keeps progressing and we have quite a bit of new research on muscle protein synthesis, some of which is even funded by the meat industry itself, accidentally showing that plant protein is not inferior. So this video is, where do you get your protein? The ultimate response 2025. Complete edition, expansion pack not included. All right, let's go. As somebody who has been a vegan for over 15 years and has a master of public health, I have to say, if I couldn't get enough protein on a vegan diet, I would not be standing here today. I'm, I'm actually sitting. Crap, do I not have enough protein? But in all seriousness, I have gained 30 pounds since going vegan. So. A time in my life where I was really trying to eat a bunch of animal protein to put on muscle, I was completely failing. And going vegan, learning a little bit more about nutrition, because it's really about calorie intake for me, I was then able to gain muscle. And I will say recently somebody did say that I look more muscular in person than in videos. And don't mind if my friend Trenton interjects here, you know, he's really big into bodybuilding. Oh yeah, Trenton button in here. I just wanted to say when we met, I was still like, this dude is really small. That's why I call you Twig the Vegan. Just don't forget to capitalize the first four letters of his name, Tren, for Tren Blown, the cattle steroid that is illegally used by many <laughs> bodybuilders out there. There are no side effects, man. I swear, I swear on my life. All right, first we need to hit some protein background basic knowledge. Firstly, the term protein was coined by Thomas Cornwall in 1872. No, it wasn't. That is total BS. And a good reminder that the average person does not really know everything about protein. No, proteins themselves were actually discovered by a Gerardus Johans Mulder. No relation to Fox Mulder of the X-Files. Where do aliens get their protein? Good question. Yeah, I don't think the average person would pass any sort of protein knowledge test or quiz, even in the realm of how much they need. Looking to the USDA's most recent guidelines, we need about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. This is the only time that the US decides to use the metric system. I don't know why. And everybody thinks they need an absolute ton, which we'll get to, but from a chart from the same guidelines, you can see that they also have a basic minimum RDA of 46 grams per adult woman per day and 56 grams per man. I thought the minimum was like 56 grams per hour, bro, what? But before we get to the fun stuff we're about to, I just wanna put one fact out there and that is that protein is nitrogen based and all of the nitrogen that animals can get is originally from plants, at least in nature before chemical fertilizer. And this is from bacteria symbiotically working with plants to pull, to fix nitrogen from the air. So we should really be asking, where do you get your air? <sighs> Dude, I didn't mean literally, you can't get protein from breathing. I'm kidding, but the point is all this protein is derived from plants getting it from our atmosphere. Now we're gonna get to studies in a bit, but I just wanna, for the visual learners out there, show what people who are eating just plant-based protein are capable of. Now here's vegan strongman Patrick Baboumian flipping a car. <laughs> And more recently, a vegan strong woman named Angelina Burva was the first woman in France to flip a car. Can you do that? I didn't think so. We also have our classic buff vegan bodybuilders who are IFBB pros such as Nimai Delgado and Jahina Malik, neither of which have eaten meat in their lifetime. There's also people like Conscious Muscle. There's Tori Washington, who has recently hit 50, but still looking amazing, super jacked. We have Nimai's partner, Bianca, who just has an amazing physique. Some lesser known ones, like here's Marco Galindo Jr. deadlifting over 800 pounds. This dude named the vegan hybrid that I found on TikTok recently, who has under a thousand followers, who's just massive. And then also shout out to Maya or Constant Growth on TikTok, who also has an incredible physique at age 20, half a million followers from it. Brian Turner also looking super swole. Leonore, a Dutch woman who's jacked and on and on and on that it's, I'm losing count, frankly. <laughs> but yeah, let's be honest, they had to work like four times as hard to get those muscles from plant protein, dude. 
Anyway, is it actually true that plant protein is inferior? Well, it's time to challenge this idea. Uh, yeah, newer research on this is absolutely blowing this idea out of the water. And first we started seeing hints of this in longer term diets. For example, this study out of China showing that even in older adults who have a harder time maintaining muscle, plant protein and animal protein equally determined muscle mass. But then we started getting studies where they actually looked at muscle protein synthesis, how much muscle growth was being stimulated after being fed plant-based or animal-based proteins. And this actually led Dr. Ids, a very scientific-based TikTok doctor, to reverse his position. Here he is. Animal protein is higher quality because they are complete proteins. I made a video stating that animal protein was superior to plant protein in the context of muscle building. But I was wrong. Since I made my video, there has been well-controlled human studies that have made me re-look at the total evidence base, and therefore I have changed my view on this topic. And then this continued even more as the meat industry funded research that repeatedly, multiple times showed that plant protein was equivalent to animal protein for that muscle protein synthesis, even trying to cook the books a little bit, which we'll get into, but we have, but for example, one funded by the beef checkoff found that there was no statistical difference between muscle protein synthesis with either type of protein. And it seems like they had to just release it because they got an NIH grant and they couldn't just hide the findings, which probably happens all the time. When I shared my results, I was disqualified. And we even have studies looking at not just muscle protein synthesis, but also strength. This study in 2023 compared a vegan to omnivorous diet whilst on a training program. They consumed over 1.8 grams per kilogram of protein per day. They found that protein synthesis rates, thigh muscle volume, cross-sectional area, and strength gains were similar between groups. Also, this study took 38 young men. They did a 12-week training program at a protein intake of 1.6 grams per kilogram. And again, no differences in lean mass, cross-sectional area, or strength between vegan or meat eaters. And from this one, so really surprised to see and also annoyed that the researchers didn't report that the incline bench gains were larger in the plant-based group than the meat-based group. But then the results keep on coming. Again, we're concerned about those older individuals, inability to keep on muscle. Well, this study found that in older adults, integrated muscle protein synthesis rates did not differ between vegan and omnivorous groups that they randomized, but that they got the bonus of lower LDL or bad cholesterol in that vegan group. The review on the topic saying that, quote, these findings challenge the conventional beliefs that vegan diets are inferior in their anabolic potential on the regulation of muscle protein synthesis, which is really what everybody is caring about here. They're caring about growing muscles, and this is literally the metric. And I can't help but remember that debate on Joe Rogan's show where they had Game Changers director James Wilkes versus anti-vegan Chris Kresser, and he was making this point that vegan protein is just not as digestible, but these protein digestibility scores largely rely on like feeding dry uncooked grains to pigs and measuring things. And it's clear that in humans, we're getting the muscle protein synthesis. Like even those raw vegans out there, they know not to eat random raw grains that are completely dry. <laughs> and this brings me to how there have actually been some hints of some potential benefits here in terms of protein. And the first hint on this was a somewhat older study finding that vegans had higher levels of blood albumin, which is a metric of blood protein, free blood protein. And it was hypothesized that because, as we've seen from many studies, vegans have lower levels of inflammatory proteins, that they were perhaps freeing up some proteins from that. But there are some new potential mechanisms coming in from research just in the last year or so. We had that Stanford twin experiment where they took twins and put one on a healthy omnivorous diet and one on a vegan diet. And they found a bunch of things, better cholesterol, even lower aging markers genetically. But then they also found that vegans had a higher level of the amino acid glycine despite consuming a bit less. How is that even possible? Well, animal protein and animal fat increase Bilophila wadsworthia, which feeds on bile acids that digest fat. And because of that, they get a little hungry for glycine as well as they convert some of those bile acids. So they eat up your glycine so it can't be absorbed. And in the process, they also create hydrogen sulfide, which is a driver of colorectal cancer. But it's also important to note that glycine is a key building block for our collagen. So that's probably why at age 72, I only look about 23. But this is where things get even more interesting within the human gut still. And that is why, at least in terms of a nutrient of focus, fiber is the new protein. And this is because our gut microbes 
convert fiber into short chain fatty acids, which boost muscle protein synthesis as well, which is wild. And also why from studies like this, increased fiber intake is actually also associated with an increased level of muscle. And this could hold the answer to why one of those meat industry funded studies, which was clearly trying to stack plant protein in the wrong direction, found that even feeding incomplete plant proteins like wheat resulted in what trended to be over 24 hours, a higher level of muscle protein synthesis, not statistically significantly different, but was like kind of an interesting sign to me. And it could be because it included more fiber and as a result, boosted muscle protein synthesis from short chain fatty acids, but we need more research on that. But moving on to the subject of frailty, perhaps we should be asking older people where they're getting their protein because we're seeing several lines of evidence now, several studies showing that not eating plant protein could be a concern for frailty. The first study, the nurse's health study, actually found that replacing just 5% of energy from plant protein intake at the expense of animal protein, dairy protein, or non-dairy animal protein was associated with either 38, 32, or 40 2% reduced risk of frailty, that's massive. And not to get too in the weeds and nerdy here, but another recent study looking at this found that some biomarkers were involved, one of which actually has to do with tryptophan related metabolites, perhaps a topic for another video. And then finally, this is supported by another study showing that higher intake of a healthy plant-based diet index resulted in lower frailty risk. I'm personally not worried about frailty because my life expectancy is like 37. At this point, you're probably commenting, unsubscribed, didn't answer the question of where he gets his protein several minutes in. Well, let's look at actual protein sources. And this is interesting because we're now in an age where even the American Heart Association has an infographic showing plant-based sources of protein. We can see here, too, we got a spectrum of foods from whole foods to more processed foods that are sources of protein. And of course, we're talking about beans and other legumes being key here, as well as other nuts and seeds really adding up over the day. But then in terms of more processed, obviously you've got Beyond Meat, Impossible Burger. No, they're roughly the same as what they are replacing. But then we also have Seitan, which is essentially <laughs> concentrated wheat protein, which depending on what other ingredients and how much water you have in there is going to have even more protein per gram than beef. And I would also add from that study, looking at incomplete proteins, just the idea that you have to obsess about combining proteins, which is really a myth from the start, seems to not really add up here. <laughs> but if you are concerned, when I periodically check my chronometer, which is a free nutrition tracker app, I have never not hit every single amino acid that is essential. I'm always blasting right past it. And yeah, 2000 calories of black beans and rice also absolutely crushes those targets. This is why I really stand by just the general principle of consuming 2000 or more calories, just the amount that you need, while including legumes on a vegan diet in a reasonable amount. All right, now let's hit a little bit of logic here. One that you may have heard before is that the strongest animals in the world are building their muscle on plant-based protein. We're talking gorillas and elephants and other massive beasts like horses, etc. I mean, you might've seen all that fuss about 100 men versus one gorilla. Uh, yeah, that's the herbivore. <laughs> answer. Now first, the stats. An adult male silverback gorilla weighs around 195 kg and can lift more than 800 kg. Their bite is stronger than a lion's, their reach is longer than humans, plus they can move faster than us and have very thick skin. So clearly there's nothing that is required about animal protein in order to build strength. If anything, those animals that rely on getting other animals' protein seem to be the laziest ones that are sitting around there for 95% of the time. If you're actually watching lions or alligators and crocodiles, they're just chilling. Well, on the other hand, herbivores are much more active, going around looking for food, monkeys swinging around all over the place. But I would just say in terms of those super strong herbivores, our protein requirement is probably even lower than theirs. Why do I say that? Well, human breast milk has the lowest protein content of any mammal on planet Earth. Yes, during the period in which we double in size the fastest, we're going way faster than we ever do. We're not just maintaining, we do that on a substance that has less than one gram of protein per 100 grams, human breast milk. That's lower than other apes, that's lower than cow's milk, and that's one-tenth of what is in rat's milk. Where do I get my hands on that? And I also think it's really interesting that you need to eat animal protein in order to get buff from some meat, yet 
About 80% of bodybuilders take isolated protein powders, which shows that you know their meat diet is not even giving them enough. And I would add that because 80% of bodybuilders are taking protein powder, vegans who decide to go that route for whatever reason should not be shamed. And this is where I have to get to the point where at least half the guys that I know believe that they're bodybuilders. They kind of act like they're bodybuilders in terms of their diet. Some of them are just bulking perpetually and not really hitting the gym, but that's that's a different story. The point is there are issues of getting excess protein, period, a bunch of them. We talked about that 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight from the USDA as a minimum. Well, we have people who are trying to build muscle and studies on them show that anything more than 1.6, which is still quite a lot and probably more than you need, is not gonna have any added benefit. So really you're just gonna be making more work for your kidneys, spending more money and just peeing it out. My pee is actually solid. You think you think that's all right? And this partially explains why male urinals in the U.S. seem to almost have like stalagmites worth of random hard buildup in there from all of the just like excess protein people are peeing out all the time. A visual you did not need. Anyway, in terms of those kidneys, chronic kidney disease is a huge disease in the U.S. and we're seeing more and more recommendations in the literature to straight up go on a plant-based diet, eat plant-based protein because of all of the effects that that can have. That plant protein can improve the kidney flow function and lower complication risk, etc. And then of course I have to mention that saturated fat in animal products is higher. Vegans in general are eating about half the amount of saturated fat as people on an omnivorous diet. And saturated fat raises LDL or bad cholesterol, which is causal to atherosclerosis from the best data we have, that genetic randomization data. And eating too much protein brings me also to our aging pathways. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking about these all the time and we're talking about mTOR, which increases disease and aging and is really sort of the on and off switch for boom and bust evolutionarily that says either grow or maintain. And all of that extra growth can lead to more aging and more cancer, et cetera. And what triggers that? excess protein. Your body's like, it's go time, it's time to expand. And that is of course driven by insulin-like growth factor one, IGF-1. And we have seen that plant protein does not trigger IGF-1 to the same degree, which is going to be better in terms of these aging markers. And then again, I wanna mention that concerns of where vegans are getting their protein are 99.999% really a concern of whether or not they're getting enough calories. The people that might look like they have a low BMI, et cetera, it's because they're literally not eating enough. You know, maybe they have an eating disorder. Maybe they have really bad dietary habits. Maybe they're too busy, too stressed out, whatever. You know, it's the calories. That's what I learned as somebody who was 30 pounds lighter, again, even on a animal, including diet. And that is why I always have to shout out Robert Cheek, who's a natural bodybuilder. I went to his talk and he talked about tracking calories after working out every day for a year and gaining one pound. I did that and that is how I actually gained some muscle. And Robert Cheek also recently leg pressed a ton of weight. So in the end, if you feel like nobody cares if you live or die, you should simply go vegan because then everybody will care about every little minute detail such as protein and little vitamins and, and just wonder how you're doing all the time. You'll feel love. Jokes aside, I think the most important thing here is that we're seeing absolutely jacked, super strong vegans. You can watch Game Changers if you wanna see more details on them and what competitions they're winning, etc. But then we also have this newer data that is coming out, not just in terms of the muscle protein synthesis of plant-based protein, people put on a vegan diet versus not, and being statistically the same, or in some cases like that incline bench, even better in terms of strength, which is wild. But we also have these mechanisms coming out, which again, need more data on them, but we have the short chain fatty acids from fiber triggering muscle protein synthesis as well. I have a whole video on that if you wanna check it out. Remember, no one is correct 100% of the time, and we must be open to changing our views as science and research develops, and not be so bogged down in our respective biases that we end up ignoring stronger data. But yeah, now you know not just where vegans get their protein, but the main concern of our vegans getting an adequate type of protein clearly they are. They're getting all of their essential amino acids, et cetera, and they're doing it in a way that has a lower risk of diseases, including our leading killer, lowering that LDL or bad cholesterol, lowering heart disease risk, and lowering chronic kidney disease risk, and mTOR, et cetera. And yeah, so let me know down below if there are any arguments here that I missed, any points that are key. I'm sure I did. Maybe I just left a couple scoops of protein knowledge there for you to scoop into the comments in the chair. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.